All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I think we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for joining us bright and early this morning um, at this joint presentation between the Michael J. Fox Foundation and ABCAM, where we will be presenting to you on the biomarkers of neuroinflammation and Parkinson's disease. My name is Elna Zadabash, and I am the Senior Product Manager for Multiplex Assays at ABCAM, and I will be one of your presenters this morning. I'm going to be joined by Dr. Nicole Polinsky from the Michael J. Fox Foundation. She is the Associate Director of Research Programs at MJFF. And for today's talk, we're going to begin by telling you a little bit about uh, the introduction into Parkinson's disease, as well as the foundation itself, and the importance of investigating inflammation in Parkinson's disease, which will be the focus of today's seminar. After that, I will join you where I will take you through the Fireplex technology platform, which was used to do all of the biomarker profiling studies that we'll be talking about today. And then Nicole and I will present some summaries and future directions for you. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Nicole to get us started. Great, thanks Elmas. So I first wanna start for those who may not be as familiar with Parkinson's with just a brief overview of this disease uh, and what we currently have in terms of understanding as well as uh, therapeutics. Mm -hmm. Parkinson's was first described by Dr. James Parkinson in 1817 on his essay on the shaking palsy. It is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's. Approximately 1 million individuals in the United States have Parkinson's and the global incidence is approximately 6 million individuals. Importantly, the prevalence of Parkinson's is projected to double by the year 2042. So it's very important that we start to uncover more about this disease, how to treat it and how to get patients better um, care. The symptoms for Parkinson's include motor and non-motor symptoms. The motor symptoms are the classical Parkinson's symptoms. It's what diagnosis is based off of. These include tremor, bradykinesia, reduced arm swing, balancing gait issues, amongst others. Non-motor symptoms can occur decades before motor symptoms show up, and this can include symptoms such as constipation, anosmia, sleep issues, and then in late stages of Parkinson's, cognitive issues as well. Importantly, only about 10% of cases have been linked to a genetic mutation, so we still have a lot to learn about the other 90% that are sporadic or idiopathic. And we do know some risk factors for Parkinson's disease, and these include advanced age, head injury, pesticide or heavy metal exposure, among others. Uh, just some, uh, this is probably pretty small, but just some uh, key important takeaways is we don't actually have any disease modifying therapies for Parkinson's disease currently available. The best Parkinson's drug was discovered in 1967, uh, that's levodopa, and that was uh, when Lyndon B. Johnson was president and Neil Armstrong had not yet walked on the moon. So although that's a really good drug for patients, they, it really helps them with their motor symptoms and some other symptoms. We have a long way to go and we're really trying to make progress on that front. Mm -hmm. We at the Fox Foundation see Parkinson's disease as a complex puzzle. This includes ver various pieces that need to kind of come together to give us a holistic view of what's going on in this disease so we can help patients. Mm -hmm. Some of these pieces we know may include a genetic component, um, we're really invested in understanding the pathways underlying Parkinson's, like neuroinflammation. Diagnosis, uh, early diagnosis, better markers for disease progression, um, and more accurate diagnosis are also going to be very important for this disease. And then clinical experience, both having patients um, involved in clinical trials and getting patients better treatments is very important. And then we have all of these other pieces that we have still yet to uncover and tease out to get a very good understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. At the Fox Foundation, we believe progress requires funding and field-wide coordination. So we work across various spectrums at the foundation. We have investment in patient cohorts, um, enrolling patients to provide either biosamples or participate in clinical trials, things along those lines, because it's really the patient uh, involvement and cooperation with us that's going to move this style forward. We also have initiatives in research tools. So we've found that, you know, it can cost a lot of money and a lot of time for researchers to make the tools they need for their experiments. And if we have tools ready made for them, we can really move progress faster. Uh, we have a lot of work understanding the biology of Parkinson's disease. 
be that uh, what's going on in idiopathic Parkinson's, in pathways that may be implicated, as well as in the genetic forms of Parkinson's disease and the risk factors we've identified. Biomarkers, which is kind of the, the key to this talk, uh, will be very important for Parkinson's disease research. It'll help us not only diagnose the disease better, but maybe earlier so we can start interventions sooner. Uh, it can help us monitor disease progression, which may shorten clinical trials um, and, and kind of find the diamonds in the rough that we may be uh, overlooking now. And then therapies. The found foundation is very involved in getting better therapies for symptomatic uh, motor symptoms, non-motor symptoms, and trying to uncover some disease-modifying therapies for patients as well. And across all of these different areas, we have crosstalk between the different groups. And we really find that accountability, collaboration, diverse expertise, open access resources, and validation and replication are so important. And it's what's really going to move the dial. So just a little bit of information on the foundation. The Michael J. Fox Foundation is the world's largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's disease research. And our mission is to accelerate the development of improved therapies and ultimately a cure for Parkinson's disease today. And our ultimate goal is to go out of business because we've met that goal. Our stats, we, have, we are a public charity that was founded in the year 2000 by the actor Michael J. Fox. We have more than 93,000 donors uh, last year and over $800 million in research programs funded to date. We have more than 700 active grants in our current portfolio, and we fund where the science takes us with one third of our funded projects with researchers outside of the United States. And we fund across the spectrum. We fund academia, industry, biotech companies, all groups that will help this uh, understanding. <laughs> Our research priorities fall into three different buckets. We're invested in looking at symptomatic treatments for motor and non-motor symptoms, as well as emerging targets. Disease modifying by looking at the genetic underpinnings of Parkinson's disease, uh, proteins that we know go awry in this disease, and also emerging targets like inflammation. And field-wide challenges by addressing the need for better biomarkers, clinical trial recruitment, research tools, and we also have a small public policy and advocacy arm to voice patients' needs on Washington, D.C. We prioritize and pursue research in these areas by both providing financial and intellectual support for projects from discovery through the clinic to ensure that progress towards new therapies for Parkinson's is made. And for this talk, I'll really be focusing on inflammation, which falls especially under the, both the disease-modifying bucket as well as field-wide challenges such as biomarkers. 